Hi there. Thanks for that kind introduction, Anna, and thanks to Synergos and the GPC for having me here. One second while I get my notes up. I'm not writing it right now. I'm just trying to get it, get in here. I do now. So thank you. It's uh, it's a real privilege um, to spend a few minutes with you remembering my grandfather, David Rockefeller. And as an early supporter of Synergos and a founding member of the Global Philanthropist Circle, he would be so pleased that we're here coming together as individuals and as families from all over the world to reflect on the field of philanthropy and to give our attention in particular to the subject of values. Since his death on the first day of spring, at the age of 101, much has been written about Grandpa's uh, international business accomplishments, his civic leadership, and the astonishing philanthropic legacy he leaves behind. His role in his roles, I guess, in in found in the founding of the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, the Rockefeller Family Fund, and the Rock and the David Rockefeller Fund, which are three successive generations of family foundations. Uh, demonstrates Grandpa's lifelong devotion to family and an equal commitment to the field of philanthropy itself. I'm so proud of his generosity in establishing those and other institutions and of his lifetime giving that totals two billion dollars. But when I think of my grandfather there are a few indelible personal moments that come to mind before those sort of historical facts. Here's one. Early last year, my wife Kala and I brought our three children to visit their then 100-year-old great-grandfather at his house in Terrytown. He was a doting great-grandfather. Nothing brought him more pleasure than spending time with his great-grandchildren, so he just lit up. And as was our custom, we, we brought him a photo album to show him uh, some of our adventures from the previous year. So the five of us cuddled up next to him on the couch or stood behind to peer over his shoulder as he flipped through the book and remarked on the pictures. This one really captures you, he said to my daughter Willow. And, or, my goodness, is that you? He'd ask my boys, you know, noticing how much they'd grown. And in the middle of the book, he, he looked up for a moment and he spoke of his late son my uncle Richard, who had died two years before. And Grandpa said, what a good man he was and how much he loved him before turning back to the book of pictures. Soon thereafter, we moved to the dinner table. Uh, and again, Grandpa spoke of Richard, so I asked him if something in particular had called Richard to mind. And he looked around the table at the five of us and, and said, the love of children. And, and then added, over my many years, it has become increasingly clear that love is the most important thing. In fact, could we all hold hands for a moment? So holding hands before dinner, thanks. It was his request, but I think we should do it now too. <laughs> Um, holding hands before dinner is a ritual my immediate family uh, does each night, but I had, we had never done it with my grandfather before. And, and I'll never forget that spontaneous outpouring of affection and wisdom from Grandpa. And what moves me the most is, and fills me with gratitude is that my children had a chance to witness their great-grandfather in that moment with his heart wide open speaking after a century of life about what mattered most. Love is the most important thing. Thanks for joining me in that. So that is the image that I carry with me of my grandfather and, and his pure presence in that moment 
is what I hope to emulate in my own life and work, and I want to share a little piece of that work with you because I'm so grateful that one of the ways I get to help carry on Grandpa's legacy is as board chair of the David Rockefeller Fund. We have our founding executive director with us, Marnie Pillsbury. Hi, Marnie. The DR Fund, as it is known, was founded by my grandparents in 1989, at first to facilitate the, the annual local gifts they made in the communities where they lived. And since then, uh, it has been developing into what we hope will uh, serve as a useful model for other small family foundations seeking to have an outsized impact for generations to come. And we have my grandfather's vision and generosity to thank for our evolution so far because over time, as his descendants, like me, came of age, grandpa invited his children, grandchildren, and their spouses to join the board and to collectively identify the issues that mattered most to us, which resulted in our three central program areas, and eventually to assume leadership of the fund. Grandpa attended every board meeting of the David Rockefeller Fund, including most recently in December. And again, he took so much pleasure from bringing his family together and being with us as we gathered in purposeful partnership, in this case, around the board table. It was really his intention uh, that the work of the fund enhance our closeness as a family and engage my generation in strategic and wholehearted giving. And that intention has provided us with a strong sense of internal mission. With his characteristic humility, Grandpa would be the first to remind us now that he was a grateful inheritor himself of the philanthropic tradition that began with his grandfather and, and father. And I suspect the sense of belonging that came uh, from being a part of that larger lineage is also what encouraged him to pass it on to us. One of my early but most important projects as chair, along with our executive director, Lucas Haynes, who some of you met this week, was to convene the family for a visioning retreat. Our goal was to reflect upon and distill the values that underpin our programs. And that core of shared values, once made explicit, could inform the drafting uh, of vision and mission statements, which in turn would keep us inspired and grounded as the fund continued to evolve. So uh, over two days at our visioning retreat, the family and trustees learned about Rockefeller philanthropy from a historical perspective. The fourth generation, my mother's generation, shared what they had learned as they had stepped into leadership of the Rockefeller Family Fund a generation earlier. And my generation, the fifth, was invited to speak aspirationally about what mattered most to us. And then in smaller, intergenerational breakout groups, we reflected on the values already embedded in our programs. And then back all together, we distilled a running list down to the center of the Venn diagram, which represented the most essential shared values. And that list, which is a living list spanning <laughs> generations, includes gratitude, reverence, respect, regeneration and connection, meaning, healing, and wholeness, collaboration, and opportunity, among others. So today, 13 family members from a pool of 28 serve on our board at any one time, with 10 sixth-generation great-grandchildren growing up pretty quickly. Um, Together, we strive to leverage all of our resources, including the advocacy and donor education undertaken by our staff. Last year, we divested from fossil fuels and asked our investment committee to learn about impact investment opportunities that we might add to our portfolio, which is already subject to environmental, social, and governance screens. And we uh, adopted our mission statement, which states that we invest in catalytic ideas people, efforts, and institutions working strategically toward ecological regeneration, justice system reform, and art for social impact. So those are our three program areas. And each step of the way, 
were inspired by the vision and generosity of grandpa to foster and embody uh, a more just, creative, and flourishing world, which we know to be possible. So I wanted to share a little bit about the DR Fund with you. I'm so grateful to play a small role in carrying forward grandpa's values through the work of the fund, and I'm really grateful uh, to share it with you today. Do we have time for a song? Are we okay on time? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, so, I think it's maybe a, a pre-value. This is a song called Gratitude that I wrote a couple of years ago and I was able to share it with Grandpa before he died. Uh, he said he liked it. And toward the end of his life, he was in an almost constant state of gratitude. It was really um, astonishing to behold the, the open state of learning and appreciation. Uh, it's a state where no negative, competitive, destructive thoughts can even coexist. Um, so to me, that's really what, what grandpa embodies.